There is this one jewel um, of a place, which is the Spiegelsaal, the, the Hall of Mirrors in the Old Palace, um, where Bach performed uh, with his musicians. And it has a very inspiring atmosphere, that room. Um, it felt like really the music was coming home to it. And the players, you could sense them responding to the proportions of the room. And, and for a piece like Brandenburg III, which is um, a series of trinities, you sense that, that each of these little groupings are interlocking and responding so beautifully to the, to the sound of the, to the sound they produce in that, in that hall. You pick up some of the sort of ghosts and shadows of his, his own personality. So there's a tremendous sense of discovery and, as, as far as we're concerned, rediscovery of the, the ambient sounds of that music in that particular context, which is intoxicating. Our functioning as a group in this particular outfit is uh, very, very much linked with um, John Elliott and John Elliott's approach. Um, and um, most of us who play now have also played in the Bach Cantata pilgrimage um, eight years ago and have done a year of Bach with him. And that gave us some kind of formation in a language. Um, and it's a continuous journey with John Elliott exploring Bach's language. Um, and I think we're very steeped in that. Uh, and because of that, we come to, we, with some kind of preconceived grammar for the language when we approach these pieces. And that was very much a unifying factor. And that was that, that, I think that that made the process of, of um, assimilating these pieces much easier. When you know it's right, uh, it's so obviously right. There is an immediate a sense of proportion and elegance about the music making, but in no sense is it artificial. It's, it's something that is actually intrinsic to the physical uh, sensation of the music. Because it's a crystallization of something that we've gone through and some kind of process, um, the end result of a process is very different from, from its beginning. We do one or two concerts, then we leave them for a couple of months, and then we come back. Uh, and that time of reflection and uh, time of you know, things settling down always has an effect. By the time that we get to the, to, to the Paris concert, and that will be taken live for a recording, we will be completely free and um, we can just play with abandon and with real pure enjoyment because all the work would have been done. That, that's for me the ultimate goal. And there I think that, that, that this recording hopefully will be different. We've tried to structure this whole um, um, Brandenburg project um, in ways that mean that we've taken the music to different places, that we've rehearsed in London and then taken it to Curtin, the, the, the very place of origin of that music. Um, and that influenced us all, I think, in our approach and has, and has stayed with us. And from there we took it to Pisa, and that brought quite a different type of dynamic and a different atmosphere to the performances. And from there, we've then combined um, these concertos with, um, in six different concerts, three before Christmas and three after Christmas, um, with the six cantatas that make up the Weihnachts Oratorium, the Christmas Oratorio, and the six surviving motets of Bach. So you get a lovely sandwich of a Brandenburg concerto, a motet, and a Christmas cantata taking place in a very sympathetic environment in the beautiful Hawksmoor Church of Christchurch Spitalfields. 
And that is the, that is the sort of climax of our uh, project, which then um, leads beyond after Christmas to a uh, performance of all the six Brandenburg concertos in Paris and to their recording um, uh, ultimately.